I'm gonna be starting with uh, Blood March. It's the second book after Legendborn. Um, these books are by Tracy Dion. So far, I am on page about page 200 of Blood Marked. You can see my little bookmark. Um, and if you haven't read Legendborn, it is a YA urban fantasy um, or contemporary fantasy set on the um, University of North Carolina campus. Um, and it revolves um, secret societies um, it is not as dark as something like Ninth House, um, and it has more rooted in um, Arthurian legend. So um, there's monsters, there's magic, there's a will they won't they <laughs> romance between a couple of different characters. Um, and yeah, season two, <laughs> and uh, Legendborn, which is the first book, ended with quite a cliffhanger slash um twist so um I was really excited to get into book two um and it has been not a disappointment so far I mean I'm 200 pages in and like a lot has happened I'm just gonna keep reading and I'll check back in if um I have another update um but yeah welcome back to the vlog is eating his dinner <laughs> um it's um the end of my work day um i read before i went to bed last night um most of blood marked um i read at least another 100 pages um i can't remember what page i'm on exactly right now and it's moving i something tracy dion does really well is she makes the characters feel like teenagers, but without them being cringy. And as someone who reads a variety of YA and adult um, books, it's nice to feel like 
I can tell the characters are younger because of their temper or because of like their uh, decision making skills. Sometimes when I read teenage things now or YA things now, I feel that like kind of like cringe where I'm like, oh God, <laughs> you know, being a cringy teen. But um, I don't think that Legendborn and Bloodmarked come off that way at all. I think that they are very like rooted in the characters. The characters feel very real and the world feels very interesting. And something she's doing too with the second book is you're we're learning more about the world beyond uh, the main character's kind of sphere of knowledge. Um, most of book one was kind of learning about this new world and then book two is kind of going deeper into the world and um, we're seeing uh, characters and aspects of the magic that are beyond the sort of circle that Brie is in, um, who's the main character. Um, and I really like it. I can tell that there's definitely going to be a book three um, by the way the pacing is going um, and, you know, how many, how much the plot has moved. But, I mean, I think that this is going to be a five-star book. Um, and I just, I love the characters so much. They're so realistic. Yeah. Good morning from me and my big old mug. <laughs> um, I woke up a little early uh, to try and finish Bloodmarked. Um, I got to about page four, uh, 430. Um, and so I am hoping that I can finish it this morning and knock down another book. Um, it is very cold here. <laughs> it snowed last night. Um, I've got the heater on, but yeah, I am, I am bundled. Um, so let's, let's finish this book. Okay. I finished Bloodmarked. And wowie. Um, talk about a cliffhanger. Um, quite, quite a lot going on, to be honest. Um, but so good. So, so good. Um, this book and this series explores so many different topics and like of all different magnitudes and it just it feels so rich and so real and so deep that I just I'm really excited for book three. Um, I'm definitely going to give it five out of five stars. Um, yeah, if you are into fantasy at all, read, read this series. Um, it is classified as YA, but I think it's more than that. So yeah, those are my, those are my thoughts. I literally just finished it. Um, and now I have to get ready for my work day, but wow, I'm gonna be thinking about this book for a while. Welcome back. Um, I gave a little update this morning earlier today, but I wanted to do a full final talk through about Bloodmarked um, because I finished it this morning um, and I will be giving it five out of five stars. <laughs> um, I think that this was a perfect follow-up to what Tracy Dion did in book one. I think that it expanded the world, it went deeper with the characters, it raised the stakes, you went deeper into the magic system, we went deeper into the characters' emotions. This book deals with a lot of like heavy topics and I think that Tracy Dion like executes them so well and like in a frame of reference for teenagers that's like Teenagers can understand hard concepts and, you know, they deal with hard things themselves. And so she doesn't, like, mince that part. She doesn't diminish that or try to, like, dumb it down. But she also makes it, like, realistic for what they are going through. Um, and it's just, she makes the characters so real. I have so many feelings about them. I ended on such a cliffhanger that 
Um, I don't know how long we're gonna have to wait for book three, but this is the kind of book um, and her writing and the way she crafted, she has crafted these two books so far. It's one of those things that like makes me want to be a better writer. And like, there's some books, like when I finish them, I'm like, I have the urge. <laughs> I need to like get up and write. And this is one of those books where it's like, I put it down and I was like, you know, you have a lot of feelings for like the characters and the plot and like excitement. But then you also have like this like inspiration. I want to make something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, it's a it's thick book, but um, I feel like I accomplished it pretty quickly. And at some point I'll, I'll reread both of them. We'll see. <laughs> All right, and on to the next. weekend um, and we have been snowed in and so some of my plans have changed. Um, I was supposed to go do some things this weekend and that is no longer happening so I'm bummed about that but um, I am gonna try to make the most of it with reading <laughs> and entertaining myself in other ways. Um, so the book that I'm gonna be starting in this uh, next section is called Little Thieves. Um, I picked it up at the library. It is a YA fantasy by Margaret Owen. Based off the inner flap, I honestly don't know much about this book. Um, it's supposed to be a retelling of The Goose Girl, which also I don't know much about. Basic premise it seems like is the main character uh, is the adopted daughter of some vengeful gods and so she has to repay some debts to them. Um, through some trials and tribulations and ends up going through some bad stuff and then needs to uh, free herself. So very vague synopsis there, um, but I am excited to get into this. I have seen good things about it from lots of uh, authors and readers that I follow online, so I'm excited to spend my wintry weekend <laughs> reading this. But yeah, without further ado, uh, let's, let's get into it. All right, welcome back. <laughs> So last night I read 50 so or so pages of Little Thieves um, and I just wanted to give my first impressions of it so far. Before I finish getting into it, I'm really hoping to finish this book by the end of February so that I can have a nice end of the month. I mean, first of all, look how cool, how cool this cover is. Can't really tell because of the all the light reflecting off of it. And I'm really intrigued because, like I mentioned earlier, the inner flap tells a lot about the story, but all of that stuff has already happened in the first 50 pages. So from here, it really could go anywhere. And I'm really intrigued by that because I was a little hesitant about how much they were sharing up front, but it seems like that, like we got through the backstory pretty quick and I really like that. This is reading very clearly and um, I'm sure we're gonna find out more as we go, like more specific details. Right now we have the basics. You know, we've got like a kind of morally gray character, 
lots of Morley Gray characters. I do wish there was a map. <laughs> I feel like some of the countries are based off of like fantasized old Europe or like old Russia, but it is technically a fantasy story. So I'm not sure like of the geography really and like, like how far things are from each other, what the names of the places are. So I would like that as a reference, but that might just be me as a reader being partial. But um, there are some pretty cool illustrations. Like this is the first pages. This is the first page of the story. Which, you know, I love me some illustrations. Fairy tale retellings are something really cool and this is, this is really interesting so far. So I don't even know what time it is, but um, I think I'm about to make dinner and then maybe I'll do a little bit of reading after dinner or some reading before bed. I had a lot of other stuff that I did today, so we will have to read this later. Okay, I'm here back under my lamp that makes it look like I've been anointed by an angel. <laughs> I am hopefully going to get a good chunk of Little Thieves done. Um, I'm still only on page like 50, which means I need to get some serious reading done if I'm going to finish this by tomorrow night, which is the end of February. So, got some chocolate. I'm gonna put some faux fireplace on and I'm gonna get in the zone and do some reading. reading update. Um, I'm about to go on my lunch break um, and after that I will probably have to go shovel outside because it is absolutely blizzarding <laughs> here right now and uh, I wanted to film, film a little clip while I still looked cute <laughs> and not uh, dripping wet from snow. Probably a foot on the ground right now maybe 16 inches with what was already there um, and so I need to talk to you about this book. Um, I got really into it last night I'm on page 240. I am really liking it. The tone of it is interesting. One thing about this book is that there are a lot of different plot elements going on right now. The main character is trying to break one of her curses. She's trying to leave. She's trying not to get found out in her secret uh, life that she's living. She's trying to evade a detective who's after her. She's trying to avoid um, several characters who are on to her. At times I feel like I'm trying to keep track of all the different pieces but I think that the author is doing a really good job of having all those different pieces kind of come together. It really is putting the main character through some stuff which is really interesting to see how she deals with it because she is a teenager and so she's not necessarily going to make the best decisions at times and it's really intriguing to see how that turns out. The plot is kind of really driving this story and also like character motivations, but um, we're just kind of watching our main character react to all the things that are happening around her and trying to make these impossible choices. But she's also a very morally gray character, so it's really fun to see her kind of battle with these choices. And, and that's something that I really like. I do still wish there was a map. We She goes throughout her city and like, there are people traveling and I really just want a map so I can see where these places are. But I'm really liking it. I'm, I'm gonna keep reading it. I'm hoping to finish it by tonight um, or early tomorrow. And I'm hoping it can be a, a five star read. Good morning. Um, I was just getting ready. I am going in 
person for work today. I didn't put my contacts in yet, and you can see when I wear my glasses, um, I have such bad vision that it kind of like cuts into my face, so I'll try to angle my face in a way so that I don't look super distorted. But we need to sit down and have a little chat because I finished Little Thieves last night. Let me put you down and we can talk about it. Okay, something that I really loved about this book and something that I really liked about Bloodmarked, which I also read in this video, is that these are YA fantasy books, but they deal with such real topics and in a way that feels accurate for the characters and also just people who, oh, you're falling, that feel accurate for the characters and also just accurate as humans. <laughs> um, this book deals a lot with, um, you know, parental neglect, um, an attempted at assault, uh, just feelings of not belonging, not feeling welcome. The main character has several moments where, you know, she, those feelings come up again and she reacts to them, whether or not that's the real issue that's happening right in front of her. So it's kind of like a PTSD moment. And it just felt so real and you know these characters feel so rich i think that this is gonna have to be a five out of five stars one thing that i wasn't sure if i totally loved was how the villain was developed i just thought that that part could have had a little bit more fleshed out with like the motivations and better a better like incorporating it into the story more as opposed to just like telling us. You definitely get the sense that the villain is creepy <laughs> and that like not a good person, but I wanted it to be a little bit more thoroughly incorporated into the story. I think this is an amazing book. Um, the mythology and the magic system is really unique. Um, I kind of wish we had more of that as well, just because it's interesting. It's kind of based off of vaguely German, maybe Russian kind of uh, language and systems. Again, I wish we had a map, but um, we do get a glossary at the end. The author kind of explains some of the words used, but you know what this book reminds me of? It reminds me of like if Bear and the Nightingale and Six of Crows had a like book baby. I think that that's what this would be. And I loved both of those books. So I think that this kind of was perfect for me. It has morally great characters. It deals with to tough topics. It has a really unique world and magic system. There's a slow burn romance. Yeah, I think that this kind of, this book kind of just did it all for me. And so I'm gonna give it uh, five out of five stars. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me in this video today. I hope you enjoyed. If you've read either of these books, let me know your thoughts. I obviously gave them five out of five stars, so I would love to hear how other people feel about them. If you want to keep up with me, you can friend me on Goodreads. That link is down below. You can follow me on Instagram at the Cozy Artist. That's cozy, C-O-Z-I-E. Be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more content from me. And with that, I hope you have a good day and I will see you in the next one.